Creating from the Heart, the Artistry of Living. I'm Susie Vance, and today I have Mike Houlihan with me. This is going to be a real treat. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm okay, looking forward Mike. to it. <laughs> so, what do you do these days? Um, what do you think your job is? My job is, I am a lobbyist. Mm -hmm. um, what do I think my job is? Uh, it seems to be a mishmash, I would say, of addressing problems from two sides because you've got the client side and the legislative side. And I feel like I try and at least meld those two people into a reasonable situation as best I can. Um, you working a lot in Congress these days? <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, you should luckily, you're successful. <laughs> luckily, it's only at in Springfield and Chicago. Okay. Oh God, Congress would be a mess. So when you were a kid, yes. <laughs> did you ever think you would be doing this? No, not. What did you think you would be doing? Um, I guess it depends what stage. Um, early on, I honestly thought I was going to be the number one draft pick in the NFL draft. <laughs> um, and then, uh, you know, Michigan City Football League uh, kind of taught me where I was in that <laughs> stratosphere. Uh -huh. um, and, then, um, and then I think later on, I thought I was going to become... <laughs> Uh, strangely enough, I got very interested in the markets and thought I was going to be the next Warren Buffett. There you um, go. And, uh, and I could not, for whatever unknown reason, it doesn't sound that fun, um, but I don't think I ever, I, I couldn't get enough of these financial stories, and which is what led me to New York eventually. Uh-huh. But I think always in the back of my mind, I had this one other thought that I would be maybe an architect. So if you were going to put those three together, the football career was doomed from the <laughs> get-go. The uh, financial career did happen in some form. And the architect uh, is just something that nowadays as a hobby, I like to do things, you know, with my hands or build you're things. you're an architect of people in some ways. I, I guess that uh -huh. might, yeah, that may be true, so, actually. Oh, how did, how did the lobbyist come about? So it was a long, unconventional of uh, <laughs> development. <clears throat> um, as I said, I went to New York right away, uh -huh. worked for a trading firm out there, um, which was very sales oriented. Um, and the skill you could use and now and today as a lobbyist. Exactly. And um, and so there was a lot of client management, a lot of client handholding, uh, learning a interesting group of personalities mm -hmm. and um, then moved back to Chicago, then out to California um, where I got involved in real estate and then finally back to Chicago with my now wife and uh, <clears throat> I was working for a real estate firm and doing some government affairs or at least meeting with aldermen and in the crash of 08 my uh, second cousin came to me and said hey I just bought out my partner uh -huh. I would could use some help and uh, especially with my real estate clients and you can learn the lobbying as you go now as you know it's not totally fair. I had some interaction with lobbyists, having grown up as the son of one. So uh, and so that probably further made me think I'm probably not going to do that for a job. But I uh, surprise, not surprise. that I don't admire my dad, but I uh, I didn't think I was going to be a lobbyist. That's for sure. And I, uh, I I thought, well, the real estate thing looks to be in a lot of trouble. I'll try this for a while uh -huh. and. Here we are almost 12, 13 years later and... You're having fun. I am having fun. I would say most days. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. you, you look, I think a lot of times you look for a majority 
Yes. I think it's impossible to have well, five out of five. Everybody always has their challenges. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, you have your yeah. You have your learning curves. That's right. It's yeah. never dull, though, because there's always a new issue to tackle. Mm -hmm. There's always something new, and you know, it's not like you're in a monotone work <laughs> environment. No, and it's not stretch. like somebody comes along and gives you the problem. No, no. I mean, you... They just arise. They, they arise. Uh, and your phone rings. Yes. Ex <laughs> that's exactly right. Oh exactly. Right, right. Me out. Yeah. So, and, that, and that's exactly what happens. And, and it, you know, uh, honestly, when I'm on my way up to the dunes, I hope that phone does not ring on Friday. Um, but, uh, but a lot of times... It does, and you address those problems as best you can. And sometimes there's solutions, sometimes there's not. Uh, but it is, it's, it's an interesting... Uh, it's certainly different every day. A hundred percent. And, you know, and year to year. Yeah. Yeah. It, and that's what I love about life is, is how it gives you all, you know, you just keep rolling along. And That's it right. isn't ever the same every day. That's what I loved about practicing law is there was always a new problem. Right. And yeah. a new industry and a new whatever on my desk. That's 100% yeah. correct. Yeah, it, it is, it is it, like I said, not dull. Not dull. So as you've gone from all of these, from football to finance to <laughs> right. eventually to lobbying yeah. to real estate. No. Yeah. Um, what advice do you have for somebody who's in high school or college thinking about their future? Oh boy, I would say, I, I, I think, I think I've got a interesting perspective on it because where you start is never where you end up and you can't know what you're going to feel about certain things until you do them. Try. I mean, yeah. and, 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 um, and one critique I would have on myself is from time to time, I think I stayed surprisingly in the safer lane a instead of jumping out and trying something a little out so, of my comfortable yeah. or okay. out of my comfort level. And I would say, Try things out of your comfort level, especially early on, and and um, and 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 really don't get. I mean, for at least the first twenty years, don't get bogged down on a label. I mean, th those would be my two. That's try try stuff out of your comfort level or comfort zone, and don't get bogged down with a label of what you you know. If there's this path because the path never stays that way. I mean, I'm sure it does for some people. I'm, there's surgeons. Well, it's always a choice. There's a surgeon out there who was, I'm going to med school, I'm doing you know this, that, Hopefully the other. He, that, that, he or that. she's happy. I, I hope so, I hope so. Um, so there's also the person who all of a sudden at the age of 30 or 40 finds themselves, oh, what am I, I hate this. Yeah. What what can I do about this? Any advice for that? I mean, on that, you know, I, <laughs> so I left the financial world at <clears throat> 27 now, partially because I thought, uh, maybe it was 28, but partially because I thought those jobs just grew on trees. Um, and I wanted to take a different direction, but I, I left and convinced my girlfriend, now wife, to quit her job as well. And we traveled for a little while until I ran out of the money I'd <laughs> saved. And, um, and, and then you, you start a whole new um, career, I guess. I guess the, 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 I think there can be a lot of satisfaction in working for a company and having a team and this, that, and the other, but also um, l I guess later in life, and you know, I've had now my own kind of company mm -hmm. for the last 
call it four years, that has been incredible. And I think the later you are, the, the, at least in my opinion, the later you are in life, the more <clears throat> you're going to want to work for yourself or with people you want to work with. Yes. And, and I think that's a, a, just a, a huge, hugely liberating decision to make. Because you, you know, want to be happy all you, the time. Yes, yes. You don't want to be with people you don't want to be with. And, and in fairness, there is no... <clears throat> I think there are only two jobs that I can think of where you are truly... You have... I mean, every even when you work for yourself, you have mm -hmm. people you work for, your clients. Right. There are only really two jobs that don't have that you wouldn't have to talk to anybody in the world, <laughs> yes. you know, and, and I'm saying like where you have nobody who, you know, even if you run a company that sells a product, you need to make sure, th you know, the consumers are your clients or this, that, and the other. And those two are, if you're trading for yourself, you can sit in a dark room and yourself. it's, and it's, you, it's a math problem, you versus the market. Right. Right. Um, so there's yeah. that one, and then I would say being a, um, I would say being an artist in in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, certainly some have a commercial aspect to them, but mm -hmm. you know, I, I would say that like a a Banksy. I, I don't. <laughs> I mean, he is right. not beholden to anyone. I you know. Right. So I think that those are. <laughs> I'm not sure why I got off on those two tangents, but it's interesting. Uh, but in any way, you have a boss, but it is liberating to be your own boss in some respects. Is and where I was going. To have fun. And to have fun. And yes, right. yes. <laughs> and I mean, it gives you the flexibility in a lot of ways. To I mean, there's challenges, but there are other things outside of work that I think are. Important. Uh, probably more so than work itself, yes. <laughs> well, thank you very much for yeah. sharing with me. Yeah. My cool hand. Susie Vance from Creating the, from the Heart, The Artistry of Living. See you next time. See ya. <laughs>